Hello, thank you for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangouts. I'm your regular host, Ayo Dele Uzubaku. Today on the Hangouts, Baru vows to work with Kachiku as economic summit kicks off in Abuja. PDP insists on North for 2019 presidency. And later on the program, more than 21,000 teachers fail primary for 21, not 21,000, 21 primary four um, um, teacher fail test in Kaduna State. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Otitoju, Dari Udufa Okon, and Adekunle Yusuf. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Well, the storm is gathering over the heads of NNPC Group Managing Director Makanti Baru and his boss Ibe Kachuku seems to be settling. Now, since last week, Baru has come under serious attack by public for disrespecting his boss and personalizing Nigeria's biggest money spinner, that's the NNPC. But before the chicken would come home to roost, Baru went public saying he was prepared to work with the minister to bring about positive change. The sincerity of the sudden change of attitude has got many Nigerians thinking, is this the end of the unhealthy rivalry between both men or merely a well-packaged publicity stunt? Well, Babajide, have we addressed the fundamental questions raised by Kachiku. Yes, I saw the photo ops yesterday. I said, good publicity stunt, good for newspapers to sell and everything. They met at the NSG summit and they embraced and they spoke as if all is well. But we, so like somebody rightly said earlier today, we, we are experiencing something that like a system defects because the acts that set up NNPC a lot of people have been calling on the National Assembly to look at it with a view of reviewing it. <coughs> that if we have this kind of situation, beyond the $25 billion and everything, Kachuku raised some vital issues. Yes. So, but Baru wants us to believe that all is well, that it was just a momentary disagreement, that's let's forge ahead, I'm ready to work with my boss. But it was the way Kachuku stated his letter, it was, and the way Baru answered that letter, it wasn't as if NNPC was like, you know, taking orders from Kachiku. Yeah, you see, the, um, just as I said a few days back, it's unfortunate that this has happened. And for people who have been putting so much spin on what has happened, I, I only sympathize with them. Because most Nigerians never ever look at the bigger picture. You've taken side, mm. you want to support May County mm. against Kachiko, and we are not asking questions. We are not asking the right questions. Nothing in the world says our own NNPC shouldn't be like Petrobras. Nothing in the world. Or British Petroleum. Today, I, I have a reason for talking about Petrobras. Mm. Because we have never, we have never properly run the NNPC. Well. And I am ashamed as a Nigerian. I'm ashamed, thoroughly ashamed as a Nigerian that Meikanti Baru will get one of his boys to do a press release where the minister is being abused, being accused of saying Fossil. baseless things. Yet, that minister is supposed to be Mekantin's uh, boss, boss. The chairman of NMPC board. He's supposed to be his boss. So, and you send your own uh, junior, director. junior, someone way below you, mm. to go and respond to him. If you can even do that, you understand? Mm. I quarrel with the language used by uh, uh, Gamadu, or what's his name? You know? It's irresponsible. Irresponsible language deployed 
against a minister. It's you see, minister. it is it. The Nigerian Constitution does not recognize minister of state. It recognizes everyone as, as a, a minister. minister. It is just by happenstance that he finds himself. As he's a representing of state. a whole state. He finds himself as minister of state, and he's no less qualified. Mm. In fact, he's one of the most qualified in that entire cabinet. Yes, in terms because of if you topped your class at UNN, you top, you were the best graduating Abbas. student, and then you went to law school, became the best graduating student at uh, law school. Yes. Then Nigerians need to also, and you became such a highly rated person at Exxon Mobil. Mm. Then Nigerians owe it a duty not to put you to shame for offering to serve their country, serve the country. Now, let us even look at some of the issues. Let's even grant it to make and see that he has the powers to do some of the things that he did, although there are gaps that some Nigerians do not talk about in that press statement. Now, he sought to defend himself. But he has he created more problems even for the president. He created credibility problems for the president. Yes. Because we can now see that some of those days that he quoted, mm. the president was supposed to be on his sick bed. Yes. Premier Times even wrote it today that that's the president a, said that's a president signed. that's a president who had given up his powers. Yes. Legally given up no, his, his powers. powers. Wrote to the National Assembly. Wrote to the National Assembly to give up his powers. Uh, and pass his responsibilities to someone else. I now signed it from his hospital bed. Yes. Now, what, Nig what Nigerians have now discovered was that because he tried to sidestep the Minister of State by walking straight to the uh, acting, acting president, president and yes. the acting president refused to have him sidetrack, uh, sidestep the Minister of State, then he decided to reach out to the president. That is one. Now, in any decent country, in any decent country, for, for, for God's sake, can we have a situation in which May Canteen, because the meaning of May Canteen is shop owner, but he doesn't own an NPC. He doesn't own an NPC. <laughs> can any, can, can, in any decent environment, any decent country, can you have a situation whereby the shop owner, Mekanti Baru sits as GMD of NMPC, initiates ideas, proposals, contracts, all by himself, takes it to a tenders board, an NMPC tenders board that is he, he heads, is that he, he, he put together this and serves as the chairman, and then have his own proposals by himself again hmm. approved. Where in the world is it done? Even little companies are never run like that. So if we have put our destiny in the hands of crooked civil servants who sat down and then came up with uh, procurement act, mm -hmm. uh, NMPC act, mm -hmm. that gives palm sex, mm -hmm. because those palm sex that are looting us, yes, looting sir. our country, these are the powers. The powers that they have been given are just similar, very similar. Procurement, the, the, the political head of ministries, who are the ministers, they have nothing to do with procurement. So is this kind of situation, does it make any sense to give someone that power to be able to propose award contracts on, I mean, uh, propose contracts on his own, and then chair a tenders board, an internal tenders board that will now approve all of what he has come up with. I mean, I've never seen, since I've been walking around the face of the earth, I've never seen where it happened. And this one particularly puts me to shame because it shows clearly that as, as a country, we are not ready. I compare us to Brazil for a reason because mm. before, mm. Uh, uh, just after independence, Nigeria and Brazil we were at par. Almost mm. at par. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With Singapore, Malaysia, and the rest of them, okay. they're all overtaking us. Adekule Yusuf, yeah. it's worrisome. The president is silent over this thing. And they've, they've asked to Mac, uh, Mac Baru to go and reply um, Kachuku. And I think Mr. President is still quiet on this. I think that's the biggest tragedy of this uh, drama. Because Mr. President's silence on this is actually 
It's not good enough. Though. You see, when uh, Kachuku was removed as NNPC GMD last year, mm -hmm. I met the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. You know, many people raised eyebrows. Many thought that that sector has been taken away from you know, Dr. You know, Kachiku. What the president is doing currently is showing is to prove his enemies, his critics wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, rather. You know, what people are saying, the insinuations of that time. So people are coming out to say, okay, didn't we say so? We predicted all this. Because in this matter, a government that prides itself as you know, the one that is fighting corruption better than anybody in the history of Nigeria should have, you know, waded into this matter and once and for all, let Nigerians know what is happening. You shouldn't take people for granted, just keep him quiet. Oh, go on and sign. Look at the man, the uh, NNPC spokesman that was speaking on behalf of the GMD, was actually recruited into NNPC by Kachuku. I was surprised when I saw hmm. the language of hmm. the press, you know, statement. Can you imagine? Hmm. I if couldn't that is believe true. it. Hmm. If that is true. I said, okay, it means that a lot of shady deeds are still going on in NNPC. If not, why is everybody, why is someone Why are they afraid? agitated? Why, why are they agitated? You should actually let Nigerians know the truth. But a situation whereby the president or the presidency is trying to keep quiet, it, some people will interpret it as maybe a way of trying to shield somebody or some people. Or, I think this silence is not good. Darry, when, um, when you look at the Silver. issues at, uh, at play here, Silver go yes, Baru has said he's going to work with his boss. But we will, we will not forget easily the language of that letter. We will not forget easily the language of Kachuku's petition and the gravity of the those things he highlighted in that letter. What we were opportuned to see, as far as I'm concerned, is the opening of more can, cans of one. And uh, why many will say it's unfortunate that uh, Baru has treated his boss wrongly. I beg to differ. I think the system yeah, itself to, yeah, is being exposed to be totally uh, unbecoming of a nation of the stature of Nigeria. I am saying this because I want you to, I want to, us to all remember that Kachiko himself was once in that position. Now we have just said that a situation where Baru as GMD will prepare, propose, and uh, initiate ideas and take it to the tenders board, which he shares, <laughs> is, uh, and, is, uh, and approve it for himself is bad. Kachuku sat on that seat. He saw this scenario. He could have changed it. He could have, as the GMD proposed, that look, this is not neat enough. In that short time? In that short time, yes. Now I want to tell you something. What you saw happen there is the Nigerian factor. Why is it that? Sorry, I'll digress. Are asking, people are asking a question. Because we see it all in the desire to push spin. They are saying Kachiku also awarded contract. Can they provide Evidences. evidence? Because mm -hmm. we, we, we do not just listen to people and Come then lap, lap uh, no, on evidence. Show us evidence. where he bridged the, 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 the uh, rule. process. What, was, what, uh, I'm say, what, okay. I, what I'm even saying Darry, is this. Darry, so. when we come back, I will allow you to okay. land on this point. Yeah. Let me quickly take this a breather. This is Journalist Hangout. We quickly go on this break. When we come back, we'll discuss more. Stay with us. Glad to have you join us on Journalist Hangouts. Now, Dari, before we went on break, you were about making a point. Yeah, the, exactly. The point I'm trying to say, what, I, what exactly I'm trying to say is, whatever system or policy or arrangement that is not appropriate, we should make haste to always talk about it. We shouldn't wait until it works against our own interests. What, what I'm saying is that Kashuku was GMD. It is, it is absurd to tell anybody anywhere in the world that a tender's board being shared by the GMD who approve his proposals. Why you have a, a, board, a, a, a board shared by the Minister of State that ordinarily should supersede that kind of anime. But Kajuku waited, he left that seat. Now the system he failed to change is working against him. 
He complained mm. appropriately. However, what became of his uh, 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 complaint? We are saying uh, Baru said he is ready to work with him. What does this make of the anti-corruption crusade of this administration? This is the biggest blot on the, on, on the white sheet of this administration as far as anti-corruption is concerned. If it has been established that protocol was jumped, contract awarded in a manner not so appropriate. And now we are trying to find the reasons. We are creating scenarios. We are asking the GMD to go and answer his uh, uh, minister. And the answer, I mean, the, that answer is coming on the pages of newspapers. And written and clothed in such terrible and irresponsibly chosen words. And then the minister and the GMD are now laughing. And we are, I, 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 I'm, I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed that uh, Kashiku will not be bold enough to drop his resignation. I am so ashamed hmm. if this should be allowed that's, to go this that's way. So on, that's so on Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm ashamed. Because in any other climb, in so any on other climb, so on Nigeria. Do, 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 I don't, do, I don't, do, I don't, do I honestly know, don't expect do him you know to drop the message? Mm -hmm. Do you know the message this old saga will send to them? Kule, just uh, uh, okay. wait and take care of Tom. Okay. Um, Babajide, what we, what we are looking at if now. If you want to push me out of a system, mm. I see clearly that your goal is to push me out of that system. I will give you a fight until the last. Well, he's not because fighting. my loyalty, how do you know? How do you know? Do you know what goes on? Yeah. Do you know what goes on? <laughs> a, a lot of what people are talking about based on conjectures. You don't know what the president told him. That's why I remember that the former number two man of Nigeria, Don Asindi, has said, when I leave office, I will never believe what I read in papers. Hmm. Because... Hmm. Because he knows that a lot what of what he reads re yes, uh, are not the so. misrepresentation yeah. of, the, of the truth. Which is a big indictment on us, on so our trade. if I am, I am, a, I'm a, because the reforms that we are talking about now, it was Kachiku that started those yes, reforms. in that sector. So nobody can deny him credit that he deserves. Yeah. Where he's wrong, we'll tell him that he's wrong. And to, at this stage, just suddenly are, resign, uh, somebody we'll be was chickening asking out. Me. At what point in time did Mr. President change his mind? Because about when he started man. out, he started out as the GMD of NNPC, yes. cum the Minister of State. Yes. And they discovered that if this man reports to me directly, mm. he had an unfettered access to Mr. President. So he was able, he had enough power to carry out these reforms. Now separating the office of the MD of the NNPC, GMD of the NNPC, yes. and the deputy, um, the, um, the deputy the minister, um, of state. Mm. minister of state. Now, knowing that this man is going to be like a featherweight, he will not be able to achieve anything. What so happened the around is, along the line? Be, you see, there's nothing wrong in having a different person as GMD. Okay. So that he can concentrate on his job as a minister. Because Buhari does not run that ministry. You can call him a uh, substantive minister. But how does he run the NMPC? I was NMPC? even told that, that he the run the Act how much does of those things recognize anything Minister of States? How, how much the of, much they how said much was of the those things? Of petroleum. There is no the uh, the idea of Minister of State is not recognized by the Nigerian Constitution. Constitution. I've said that today. Everyone is a minister. The Constitution yeah. says that every state of the country will produce a minister. minister. So you minister. know, it's just by happenstance that he finds himself where he is. When want now, to... what I'm saying for you to know that. Even in that position, he still has powers. If they will allow him to exercise his powers. Nobody, the shop owner in his position, cannot, because a lot of these contracts that we are talking about must be taken before fake, depending on the size of the contract. You, as GMD of you NMPC, go, you, you can't can go before fake, fake. because you are not a, a cabinet a minister. It is the minister of state now. Who will come and present, present it? Yes. And I'm sure that that is why a structured man like, like uh, Oshibajo said, okay, go and deal with uh, this Minister. man. Because, look, the channels, the channels are there. Look, when people say, oh, there was no, no, he didn't do anything wrong, it's because they choose not to see some of the salient facts. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the NMPC Act says that the board shall exercise, shall, shall run the affairs of the NMPC. Mm. So if, if the GMD 
will sit in his position and literally do everything that he wants. Without the board. Then what is the, what is the function of the board? Why did the president waste his time to now Continue set up a board. board and put Kachiku in that place? Because the president has, has powers and he can delegate those powers. So by making Kachiku chairman the chairman of the board, you have delegated, you have, you have, you have given your powers to him to oh, exercise the in, uh, uh, so uh, allow him to exercise I have as to chairman Chuku, of the board I have Tochuku Tochuku is calling us from River State thank you for joining us Tochuku okay good day my brother God bless you all amen you. yes and uh, I thank God I got your people today on this issue yes. I'm battling to hear Tochuku volume I want, I want I want all the Nigerians to know and, and I, I don't know what our leaders are teaching us, the young ones. I don't know where they feel we are going to. But I want to tell you to do something, my brother. That is why Nigerian election is going to be like war. You would like your own person to be there mm. for you. To Water. Mm. All right, I think we missed um, Tochiko. Mm. So, gentlemen, the bottom line now, where do we go from here? It's a regular thing, and anytime we want to see it, this will slide, and we'll experience another, you know, um, rift inside this cabinet because it's becoming a case of recurring things that we've been seeing these functions overlapping ministers and controversy within the house and. Yeah, it's so much. Uh, it, it doesn't so much show. It, it, does, it doesn't so show much togetherness. And the normal characteristic of Mr. President is sit down from, from afar and he looks. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to understand that style. That's I'm like, trying to understand that style. <laughs> you see, when you, when you see. Maybe there's a strategy when, in that style. When you see okay. the DG of DSS writing a report to Against name. <laughs> the to the fate of, no, the fate of. An appointee of his. So you know that this is not a government that is well coordinated. Mr. President all, doesn't seem to all, be in charge. You see, look at a lot that is happening. Look at what happened in the aviation and transport mm, uh, ministry, mm, mm. They don't where talk. the mm. minister of state was. <laughs> it was a big deal before mm. Amici, you know, calmly handled. Oh, you handle aviation, let me be handled. To that degenerated, degenerated into another national crisis. So the way we do things is there, I know, but the Mr. President seems to like to just watch and i don't like that he should <laughs> be more involved we need him to directly be more involved you know most of these things we later haunt his own image because at the end of the day you wouldn't like what is it to be seen as you, a you democrat the, thing, uh, the president that the president the president to? says a lot to the people who work with him that we get to hear that i know Occasionally, when some of the people meet with the president, the CBN governor and the rest of them, when they come out to tell you what the president told them, you will now be surprised. So the president said this much. You know? Who like, do, who do, do we blame? Is it, it is when, no, you see, the, the communication <laughs> is a problem. But you see, maybe that is his own way. That is the way he wants it. But the president, look, what the CBN is doing today, the uncle borrowers thing, he called the CBN governor and said, this is what I want. This is what I want. You must target the youths. I want these young people to be employed. And he told them, whatever you do that ensures that jobs are created for these people, it is what I will support. That's what the president told him. And he came out to say, yes, the president said this. Remember, today I can tell you that if the Air Force people want to buy spears, spears for their airplanes, even the CBN governor will personally be pushing the fire because that's the instruction that the president gave. So he gets, there are many things that he gets to do that we don't see because we are far away oh, and a lot of those things are not communicated to the Nigerian people. That's why. When people think that, oh, the end has come for, for, um, for Kachiku, I just pity them. Because I have seen such situations before in, in, in my years as a practicing journalist, that the person that you thought was down, will not. If the, if the president has faith in you, that's the way the system is, he will keep you. 
no matter what people say. He will keep you because he believes that Ajayo Day will be vindicated. His faith in you, will, uh, I mean, will, 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 will be clear. So we don't know what they discussed. We don't know what they are still saying at this time. What we know is that this thing is wrong. Sidestepping uh, uh, due process mm. is wrong. Having a minister belittled by by a GMD who is below him is unacceptable. And 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 we are telling the government that this sort of thing should not continue. All right. After this break, PDP insists on North for 2019 presidency. It's the journalist hangout. We'll be right back after this breather. Stay with us. Thank you for joining us. If you are just joining us, this is Television Continental Journalist Hangout. We're reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria. Governor Ayodele Fayoshi of Ekiti State sure stirred up an honest nest with his hurried declaration for 2019 presidency. Now, on Tuesday, leaders and elders of the party from the North met and insisted that, at, <laughs> that no member of the party from other parts of the country will rest the tickets with them. Now, this meeting sends a strong signal that the party, which is undergoing a healing process, is still very sick and some of its trusted allies are its worst enemies. What does this say about Fayoshis and others in the party? Will the party be able to solve the leadership puzzle tearing its southwest chapter apart before 2019. Gentlemen, me, I knew that it was a joke when Governor Fire Shade declared. Somebody told me that no, anything can happen in Nigerian politics. And I said, okay, no problem. Part of the problem that PDP had in 2015, mm -hmm. you know, was fielding the president, they didn't have a primary, fielding the president from the South South, and it became this uh, the the mobilization from the north was so enormous and everything it had to be because mm -hmm. it, it had to be mm. because they lost their son mm. and you jonathan you said you you decided you took the time of time of their son the first time that's yeah Adwa. yes you took you part of his it. first time mm. the two years and then you mm. are re-elected you are elected you use to your position the eight mm. years. you use your co position to become substantive president. president. You entered the uh, electoral race and won. And then you are at four years. Hmm. So their own argument is ideally their son, Yaradua, will have done normally two terms, yes. eight years. Eight years. They lost that opportunity. Just what they thought this. was that Jonathan would just Turn run down. the government until we have fresh elections. And then, um, at the time of fresh elections, field. they will be able to field another candidate from the north, to, from the north, especially from that northwest, to complete Yaradua's uh, tenure. Uh, tenure. But it didn't happen. And the way the north just first cheated somehow hmm. is not you don't need so much campaign hmm. to convince the average northerner that look the mobilization something was hot. something <laughs> that belongs to you has been taken away. Hmm. So it, it was based on that, that it was easy to mobilize people. And then, of course, you know, the way the election went, people praying in churches, uh, most who being mobilized and all that, uh, pastors being given money, you know, to vote for uh, Jonathan and all that. And then Jonathan too reaching out to emirs, some emirs, most emirs took the money. Some <laughs> emirs, could not work. decent <laughs> emirs, like one emir, in one of the farthest states of the northwest. I don't want to mention the Emir now. He refused to take the money. And the southwest over that said, I can't pay for you. Yes. <laughs> refused to take the money. I can't tell my people who to vote. The thing is, you cannot, they don't even campaign. It's a myth to think that once you get the support of a traditional ruler, you have won the election. Not in this modern age. Now, you are just wasting money not for in nothing. Twitter, eh? So okay. they not felt that, look, this was the opportunity, you know, that was taken away from them. And Jonathan still wanted to do another time, which will make him 
president of Nigeria for, for about 10 years. years. Okay, 10, 10, 10. Yes, 10. you know. So they just presence. felt, no, 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 this will not happen because the North will have been out of power for so far long. too long, mm. in their view. Okay. That was why it was easy to mobilize uh, against uh, Let me quickly take uh, uh, Professor Jerry Gana and let's just listen to what he said about this. By the grace of God, whatever the fire shares of this world may be doing, you know, this party has already resolved. And we agree. And today again, we shall endorse that the presidential candidate of our party will come from one of these three northern states. And you know, power comes from God. Therefore, let's not fight about this. We must wisely discuss. The best among us will emerge. And we shall support that person. Because when that person is in power, we are all in power. The northern states must give to Nigerian PDP at the center the very best. Whatever has been given to us to produce, please look among yourselves. We are very well endowed. The PDP that will take over in 2019 will not be the PDP, however good it was. It will be a much better PDP, a PDP that performs. We look among the contenders in the southwest and give it back into one of them. That is how we can stabilize this party. If you are looking for a position, you come from the north, you come to buy form, we will sell form to you if that position is zoned to north. If you are from the south and you come to buy form, we will sell to you because the convention zone position to the south. But we know how politics is being played. If there are 10 players, if majority have a common position, even if you go for election, they win. So making it abundantly clear, this is explicit enough. What does Ayoshe want? Because I'm sure that declaration that day, I'm sure he has something in mind. Can you just tell Nigerians what could be going through the mind? Is it to add it to his CV as a presidential aspirant? What Joker Ayoshe wants, have is an executive governor. Uh, yes, but he's behaving like a Joker, you know, a comedian sort of. When you desecrate that high office, you have to describe you by. So you are saying it's an alawada. Yeah, it's an alawada keri keri of a governor. You see, when you look at the timing of his declaration, you look at the way he even did everything. Everything is wrong. Because INEC even came out that it is not time. When you look at <laughs> our laws, you breach our laws. Mm -hmm. So, and you call that it a could be counterproductive for that. So, so, so when I call him a joker, you just have to. He has immunity me. to breach the laws. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, immunity to commit of any. Mm. You see, I think he's just trying to seek relevance, just seeking publicity. And uh, he must have realized that all the millions he has wasted into mm. all this now. It's like money going down, down the drain. The drain. No, one particular mm. thing I noticed that the diary, mm. I didn't see um, any of his colleagues out of 36 governors. Mm. I expected mm. his close allies. And there are not too many jokers in Nigeria. Some wicked, <laughs> they some of his they didn't they buy share, into his like uh, uh, But the, the highest person I saw was Femi Fanakari. Yes. Oh. Those uh, are the characters uh, okay, that Femi. will be party yes. okay. to such a charity. And Chief uh, Yola uh, was there. Was yes, there. He was yes there. he was there. Oh. You see, the thing is, how if I was is the chairman. PDP governor's forum. So on but that sincerely, is uh, like uh, uh, people will say, oh, why ho, or your, in many cases. He's mm. on his own in many mm. situations. He's mm. the chairman of the governors. But he's not speaking for them. He's not speaking for them. And he is speaking for a particular sector of the PDP. The, the jokers in PDP is their chief joker. Yeah. And that is, the, 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 there is need for him to remain relevant. Th new things are happening in PDP. Power in PDP is about to change hands. Real leadership, elected leadership, may soon emerge in that party. And he will remain in that party, having nowhere else to go. He wants relevance within PDP. That is one. So it is something big to be called a presidential aspirant, as far as he is concerned. That's one. Two, Fayoshi is an outgoing governor. He will soon be out of office in a kitty. And uh, someone else will take over as governor. He must be referred to by a particular name. So I saw what he did that day as a way of telling people, I am on my way out, but I'm not about to be forgotten. And he went to Abuja, of all places, knowing fully well 
that INEC should ought to be allowed to signal the, uh, the commencement. The yes. He's, mm. if I was saying mm. he's carrying on as if immunity for him as a governor is immunity for him forever. Mm. Forgetting that someday he will have to answer some of, for, for some of these things. And with statements like what we had from the likes of uh, Jerry Gana, I think Fawashi has finally, finally been ridiculed. Hmm. Whatever the likes of Fawashi may be doing. Okay, let me quickly take. Um, Taju Din is calling us from Niger State. Thank you for joining us, Taju. Thank you very much. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Go yeah. ahead, your contribution. I just want to make a contribution. All right, go ahead. Uh, two, two things. Uh, first, the PNC, Taru, and the other man, uh, Kachibu. Quickly. Uh, really, I really appreciate your program. And uh, as I'm talking to you from now, we have a few centers showing your program every evening. Viewing uh, center. You have a viewing center for the program. Yeah. Taju, yes. you have yes. a viewing center. Yes, exactly. Do you collect yes. money from people to watch our program? Yes, exactly. But me now. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's not the first time. <laughs> That's, that's, that's not that's the first time much <laughs> during, during the election that happened. Well. No, please let him make his contribution. Okay, want to hear you. Okay, please, first of all, I really want to uh, Mr. President said about the Bekachiku. I really want to meet him. I really appreciate the Bekachiku. But another thing is, by Mr. President telling that not to reply me, for me, there's nothing bad in it. I don't for me. All right, I think our time is past. Man. Thank you, Taju. But at least I didn't hear the rest of what Taju said. But they, I just hear that part that he has a viewing center. Yes. And he program. said he <laughs> said that we, they from the north support uh, Kachuku, but they don't see anything wrong in Mr. President asking Baru to reply. Yes. You know, Kachuku. Okay, that's what he said. Okay, so I think um, I think um, I got him right. Mm. Yes. We we'll move on now. Ask me about the quality of Nigeria education, and I will show you some teachers from Kaduna State. Their story is too troubling, too disappointing to be true. It's a mixture of surprise and anger. Last month, Governor Nasser El Rufai said 50% of them failed primary four exams, primary four, or teachers failing primary four exams. The same exams their students pass without sweat it's sweat this revelations sent shivers down the spine of many some thoughts the news was a bit exaggerated a few hours ago the Kaduna state government released pictures of their examination paper sadly 21,780 I misquoted it in my intro 21,780 supposed Teachers failed shamelessly. How did these fellows find their ways to the classrooms? <coughs> if they fail the same exams they set for their students, how have <laughs> how have they been, been grading them? Oh. Now, how do we clean up this mess? I know this is not peculiar to Kaduna. It's a reflection of what we have around the country. Mm -hmm because it happened during the uh, Comrade Governor's Shumale. time. Adam Sushomale. Yes, and that's uh, Comrade Governor. Under the, the man uh, who is the spokesman of the APC now. Bolaji Abdullah. Bolaji Organized test for teachers. Their students passed, the teachers failed. Mm. So mm. it's in not just in Edo <laughs> State. In, in Edo State. Adam Sushomale failed, you know, you know, because when the teachers those some of the people that feed mm. and he sacked them he later. Yes, <laughs> yeah. so he, he sacked 836 teachers in uh, those states. Some of those teachers were blind. Some of them were mentally unstable. And All kinds of people are teaching students in our country. Mm. All kinds of people are teaching students. So Osho Mole, you know, even encountered a woman who could not read. Who could not even could write, write, could write, could write her own affidavit, affidavit that she deposed to. The, the governor, the then going to say, read. She could not read it. Not and uh, it. when Ujumwale now corrected her and said, look, uh, this sentence, read this sentence again, she switched to pigeon. Okay. Said, now that's, want, uh, that's even the picture of Ujumwale yeah? and the, um, the woman. Yes. Yeah. That, no, she that she now good. switched to pigeon. No, no, and said, uh, you, uh, 
make a make a make a read them from the beginning. You know something like that. So <laughs> it's not in October 2016, a group uh, by the name Center for Learning and Educational Development Advocacy Africa projected that 68 percent of primary and secondary school teachers across Nigeria are not qualified. Hmm. What we've seen now with Kaduna is out of 33,000. Hmm. 21,780 teachers yeah, failed, a primary, failed the primary four test. Okay. You see, we, people Today, must realize. Think, let me quickly go on this final break. When we come back, we'll just come back, uh, we'll conclude on this issue. Please, we are, stay with us. It's your groundbreaking program of the year journalist hangout and this is the final stretch before we went on that break we were talking about you know the state of teachers and Babajide, i am aware mm -hmm. that half of the people right now going you know entering this profession is because of unemployment yes and it's not because, because it's not, they are they are what i call beds of passage they have nowhere to go they are, in fact, they, they have no form of training as teachers. It's because that's the only employment that they can find. They have no passion for it. They, have no, they don't have the know-how. They don't have the hunger to even develop themselves. And they are not trainable. So that's why I do not totally disagree with Erufai when he said, look, we are, look, we are shopping for 25,000 more teachers. But what Erufai must realize is that, look, the education sector has gone down has been going steadily down for years. There are university graduates mm. who will probably mm. be worse. worse than some of those people. So he's probably thinking, oh, I can go and get fresh graduates because he said we'll look for young people. Mm. <laughs> I'm mm. just laughing. Some of those young people that he thinks mm. he will find, mm. they cannot write zero mm. with the, the, the bottom of a Coke bottle. <laughs> they can't write zero. <laughs> you see, um, at the entrance of a university in South Africa, they say, Destroying is boldly written there. Destroying any nation does not require the use of atomic bombs or the use of long range missiles, it only requires lowering the quality of education. Mm. Destructive, you see, what Erufa is talking about is something that is commendable, but I'm afraid, afraid in the sense that those who are there when those guys were recruited, mm -hmm. the same process, the same system we still will employ not, new ones. Will that will is not, to say... Um, will he not really send his um, decision <laughs> because of political expediency, expediency <laughs> because what Adam Soshomole did? Will he be because, able to sack... Uh, because when they, 25, want to when they want to employ teachers, you know, merit criteria will not be followed. I think this was the first time of you Oshomole. Know, many political mm -hmm. big weeks will have candidates and you have to accommodate their candidate. That is what they do. Let me tell you one thing. When Governor Akiwu Miyambo, you know, you know, came into office. He employed over a thousand teachers into primary schools. Do you know, in the history of Lagos State, they were the first set of graduates to be employed as teachers, as primary school teachers in Lagos State. I was shocked when I heard the news. Hmm. They were, the teachers, they were congratulating all the, the new teachers that, oh, wow, lucky you. In the history of this state, you are the first set of graduates to be employed as legal, you know, primary teachers, primary school teachers in Lagos State. I was shocked. Was normally that is, for an NCO so what we are what we are saying is that the system across the nation mm -hmm. is done. And that is the foundation of education. Yes. The moment you get it wrong from there, uh, there's nothing you can do. Some of our friends in federal universities these days, sometimes when they call some of us as guests, the quality of people we see in the universities, yes. you wouldn't believe it. Look when at I was, even, look when at I was in now. when I was in form one, I didn't even see, the worst people in my class were not, you know, like were not that see. bad. Most of what is people you see in the universities today. You yes. just cry for your country. Look at Nance. Nance. Mm -hmm. Usually the most brilliant students are the people who that you find in Nance, Nance who can speak excellent English. Mm -hmm. We had people like Femi Falano, who was PRO of Nance. Yes, we now. had people like the MOB. Yeah, yeah. MOB yes, was president of Nance. You know? Yeah, yeah. People like Alon Yomi. No, Shola. Shola Alon Yomi. Extremely brilliant guy. Yes. You're just as brilliant as his brother. You know, but today, 
when nuns, when they want to respond, because politicians use them a lot these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're Not, like naughty boys. Mm -hmm. When they want to well, talk on TV, you see them. Like they can speak good English. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is your contribution here. What? It is uh, as usual unfortunate. It seems there are too many things being unfortunate in Nigeria these days. We may have. We'll get to, there. Well, the prayer continues. <laughs> what happened in Kaduna? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is, 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 we'll get there. For that okay. revelation <laughs> about another sector of the political Nigeria that is in their need of attention, that's always been in need of attention. And we've always paid lip, lip service to cleaning the rot in the educational sector. We have seen it happen in Edo, it happened in Kwara. Now we are all talking about uh, Kaduna. If teachers found it difficult to pass primary four text or examination, mm. the question is what have they been teaching the pupils? Who have been examining the pupils? And on what basis? You see, it, it forces one to go back in time and remember those who taught us. The quality of teachers. The quality of teachers we had. Teachers who will teach you and you go home, rest assured that you have learned. But how did we get here? It started with I, 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 uh, what, uh, what was read uh, 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 that we had in front of the South African University. And, uh, yeah. Our educational institution was gradually destroyed, largely by our own undoings. In a situation where we rushed to copy whatever has been done anywhere in the world. We started with uh, granting all sort of uh, uh, certificate, I mean, certification to people to run higher institutions. It started with colleges of education and polytechnics, private colleges of education, private polytechnics. A lot of products were being shunned out. Even before then, you had people who had been teaching for donkey years using the same curriculum and they were never changed. Hmm. The system kept them. People who were gradually going senile, remaining in the teaching profession because new teachers were not being employed. <laughs> People who lost their sights <laughs> over the years remained teachers. Hmm. And we kept this on and on. And now we, we have found ourselves in this situation. Oh, yeah. So on, the final, on the final note, gentlemen, way forward. Because um, b uh, to establish schools now, in, at least in Lagos State, I don't know federal, federal you, you need uh, uh, a, B a BED. Mm. Must be the if you want to be a uh, if you mm. want to be a proprietor and everything and everything. Yeah, well. Now, when are we going to start that practice to even employ a teacher? That this should be trained teachers, not trained, unemployment, not trained as teachers. A because when you job when you, when, those when, who are looking for jobs, but when you blame the teachers, true. Please try and check their remuneration oh. and see what goes on around the world. So, when you don't motivate them, it's another issue. Ah. Many of them that are qualified, BED, MED, what are they delivering? Because you are not motivated. Yeah, no, 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 no. Believe what, me, what the, I have people, of I have people who came in the to first place. Recently. Who I taught said, the training? If teachers. I were to be your own father, I trained you up to university, I'll consider you a bad investment. Because, mm -hmm. I, yes, if as a graduate you what's call the, me, you cannot even feed yourself. Jide, it's even been saying if you, any secondary school, any primary school now, when they want to do WAEC mm -hmm. in, in secondary school now, that their teachers will even write the answers on the board. Well, not the teachers. Some, some, pe some people yeah. are paid. Um, you teachers see, people are paid to sort the, the question. question. Finally, the question you ask is, um, what can we do? Mm. We should not focus the, on, on the building. Mm. The governors are focusing on be beautiful mm. buildings. Mm. 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 It is the quality of mm. instruction that that matters. Not the school. Not the not the, not the, not the structure. Then the ratio of teacher to pupil. It's a big problem. Mm. In some cases, you have almost 200 people in a class mm. to one teacher. Mm. How will he be able to mass sex? It's nobody's assignment and all that. So, you can't ask any kid now and say, I want to become So, a the thing is, we should Who not just focus on enrollment alone. Mm. We want the enrollment figures to go up. We should focus on the quality of instruction. Mm. Quality, because the quality of instruction that will give you the total, yeah, total the graduate outputs. Mm. I want to thank you, um, Dario Odufaokon. I want to thank you, Adekunle Yusuf, and Babajide Koladi Utstoju. And that's where we drop the anchor.
and journalist hangouts. Join us tomorrow for another interesting episode of the program. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. God bless Nigeria and bye for now.